Hello and welcome to the Theory of Computation lectures. In this class, we will talk about the Chomsky hierarchy of grammars. In the last class, we discussed about the components of a grammar and we saw that a grammar can be depicted as a four tuple Vn, Sigma, P and S where Vn is a finite non-empty set whose elements are called variables or non-terminals. Usually, the elements of this set are denoted by uppercase letters. Sigma is a finite set whose elements are called terminals. Usually, the elements of this set are denoted by lowercase letters or digits. S is a special variable which is called the start symbol and it's a part of Vn. P is a finite set of production rules whose elements are of the form alpha arrow beta where alpha and beta can be any combination of terminals and non-terminals with the restriction that alpha must contain at least one non-terminal. Based on the production rules, grammars can be categorized into four different types called type 0, type 1, type 2 and type 3 grammars. Now these grammars are organized by a hierarchical model by Nguyen Chomsky and the model can be depicted as follows. So the Chomsky hierarchy of grammars starts with the type 0 grammar or the T0 grammar. The corresponding language is recursively enumerable language and the corresponding machine is a Turing machine. So basically a grammar as we have seen produces or generates a language which is in turn accepted by a machine. So the type 0 grammar produces the recursively enumerable language and it is accepted, this language is accepted by a Turing machine. Then we have a type 1 grammar which produces the context sensitive language and it is accepted by a machine called linear bounded automata. The type 2 grammar produces a language called a context free language and the context free language is in turn accepted by a machine called the push down automata. And finally the type 3 grammar produces a language called a regular language and which is accepted by a machine called a finite automata. So this is basically the Chomsky hierarchy of grammars. Now we should notice one thing is that the grammars are organized in a, a subset form. So for example type 0 grammar is the superset of all the other grammars and type 1 grammar is a subset of T0, T2 is a subset of T1 and T3 is a subset of T2. In other words, T3 is a subset of all the other three grammars, T2 is a subset of T0 and T1 and so on. So the production rules of a T0 grammar are very generic, whereas the production rules of a T1 grammar are more restricted than T0, the production rules of a T2 grammar are more restricted than T1 and T3 has the most restricted kind of production rules. Now, if a grammar has very restricted production rules, the language that is produced by the grammar is quite simple. So, since T3 has the most restricted kind of production rules, regular language is the simplest form of the language and we need a very simple machine to accept that language. So, the finite automata is the simplest kind of automata that we know. Correspondingly, context-free language is a more complicated language compared to the regular language. Context sensitive language is more complicated than both regular and context free languages and recursively enumerable language is the most complicated form of language as it is produced by the simplest form of grammar which is the T0 grammar and that's why a recursively enumerable language can be accepted by the most complex machine which is the Turing machine. So let's talk about the type 0 grammar which is also called the unrestricted or the recursively enumerable grammar. So a recursively enumerable grammar can produce a recursively enumerable language which is accepted by a Turing machine. The production rules in this grammar are of the form alpha arrow beta where alpha can be any combination of terminals or non-terminals with the restriction that it has to contain at least one non-terminal. Now this is an expression which tells exactly that. We say alpha belongs to Vn union sigma whole star followed by Vn followed by Vn union sigma whole star. Now we know about this notation star, it's the clean closure, we had discussed this in one of our earlier classes. So what does this mean? It can be any combination of strings of size length 0 and more taken from the set which is the union of Vn and Sigma. Now what is the shortest string that can come out of this? Of course it's the 0 length string which is epsilon. 
similarly what is the shortest string which can come out of the right hand side of the expression that is also epsilon but the string in the middle can be taken from vn so that means it has to contain at least one non terminal if you concatenate epsilon with a string with vn with another epsilon you get that string which comes from vn so basically alpha must contain at least non terminal is what this expression means beta in the other hand has no restriction it can be any combination of terminals and non terminals so which is expressed as beta belongs to vn union sigma whole star now let's talk about the type 1 or context sensitive or length increasing or a non contracting grammar so basically a context sensitive grammar or a type 1 grammar produces a language called a context sensitive language and which is in turn accepted by a machine called linear bounded automata the production rules in this grammar are of the form alpha arrow beta where alpha belongs to vn union sigma whole star vn vn union sigma whole star as in the previous case or as in type 0 grammar but beta belongs to vn union sigma whole plus notice this this is a positive closure whereas in the previous case it was a clean closure so what is the difference between a positive closure and a clean closure as we had discussed in the positive closure the zero length string is not present so basically that means beta cannot have an empty string and the other restriction is that the size of alpha is less than equal to the size of beta which means whatever is the size of the left hand side of the production rule must be less than or equal to the size of the right hand side of the production rule that's why it's called a length increasing or a non contracting grammar but notice one thing as we had said that beta cannot have the empty string epsilon so that would mean that a arrow epsilon kind of a production is not allowed because length of a is 1 and length of epsilon is 0 so the length of the left hand side of the production is more than length of the right hand side of the production which is not allowed by the previous rule now there is a question in this case the question is that okay we know that type 2 grammar is a subset of type 1 grammar and type 2 grammar type 3 grammars allow uh, null production so in those grammars a arrow epsilon kind of productions are allowed so if we are saying that this kind of production is not allowed in type 1 grammar then how come type 2 and type 3 grammars are also subsets of type 1 grammar that looks little strange so for that there is a special rule which says that s arrow epsilon is allowed as an exception s remember is the start symbol so this is allowed as an exception just that because uh, type 2 and type 3 grammars are subsets and which allow such productions but there is a restriction that s cannot appear in the right hand side of any production so now we have understood why type 1 grammar is called a non contracting grammar or a length increasing grammar because the left hand side of the production has size which is less than or equal to the right hand side of the production but why is it called a context sensitive grammar to understand that let's first look at an example of a context sensitive sen sentence so if you look at this sentence which says men we are not machines and compare that with this sentence men we are not machines so the meaning of the two sentences can be very different depending on the position of the comma so in the first sentence in the left hand side of the comma we have men we are and in the right hand side not machines whereas in the second sentence we have men we are not machines so basically these two sentences take different meaning depending on the context or depending on what is on the left hand side of the comma and what is on the right hand side of the comma so in a context sensitive grammar production rules basically take the form alpha a beta arrow alpha gamma beta where you see in these production rules alpha is the left hand context of a and beta is the right hand context of a whereas in this side alpha is the left hand context of gamma and beta is the right hand context of gamma so the position of alpha and beta does not change the production rule basically produces a to gamma 
depending on the context alpha and beta. So, if the context changes from alpha and beta to some other context, then A can produce something else. So, that is why it is called a context sensitive grammar. Now, in this case, alpha and beta belongs to the clean closure of the union of Vn and sigma and A belongs to Vn. Whereas, gamma belongs to the positive closure of Vn union sigma. Now, let us talk about the type 2 or the context free grammar. So, a context free grammar produces a context free language which is in turn accepted by a push down automata. The production rules are of the form alpha or beta where alpha belongs to Vn, beta belongs to the clean closure of Vn union sigma and the size of alpha is 1. So, okay. so that means the left hand side of the production rule can only contain non-terminals and also it can contain only one non-terminal. So, basically in a context free grammar, the restriction is that the left hand side of the production rule can contain only one non-terminal, whereas the right hand side can be any combination of terminals and non-terminals and also uh, null productions are allowed. So, A, arrow, epsilon kind of productions are allowed in type 2 grammars. The last grammar which is called the regular grammar or the type 3 grammar uh, is also a grammar with the most restrictions and such a grammar can produce a language called a regular language which is in turn accepted by a machine called finite automata. The production rules can be of two types. In a left linear grammar, the production rules are of the form A arrow A or A arrow B A where small a is a terminal capital A capital B as we know are non-terminals. Whereas in a right linear grammar, the production rule is of the form A arrow small a or A arrow small a capital B. Now, if you notice these two production rules, what does it tell us? It tells us that the left hand side of the production rule can contain only one non-terminal as in the case of a type 2 grammar. Whereas in the right hand side of the production rule, it can contain either a single terminal or a terminal and a non-terminal where the non-terminal can appear in the leftmost position in case of a left linear grammar or in the rightmost position in the case of a right linear grammar. So, A and B are both non-terminals whereas the size of A and the size of B are equal and that is 1 and small a which is terminal belongs to sigma star. So, this is about the type 3 or regular grammar. So, for example, A arrow B C is it a valid production in a type 3 or a regular grammar? You see A arrow B C in the right hand side there are two non-terminals B and C. Now, this is a valid production in a context free grammar, but not in a regular grammar because in a regular grammar there cannot be two non-terminals in the right hand side of the production rule. Okay. So, hopefully we have understood what are the four types of grammars and the Chomsky hierarchy of grammars. In the next class, we will talk about finite state machines or deterministic finite automata. Thank you.